sending open sound control messages using multiplay. So open sound control is a network communication protocol. It allows different pieces of hardware and software to communicate with each other using a specific language which is called OSC or open sound control. Sometimes open sound control is baked into the product like there's a lot of uh, digital mixers and light boards out there that have open sound control as part of their operating system. So you'd have to look at the manual to discover what are the commands that this particular piece of hardware can accept via open sound control messages. And in some cases you're able to design your own messages and associate them with buttons or faders and that could be hardware or software. It all depends on the manufacturer and what they've enabled with OSC. In order to communicate between software or hardware, all the devices or software that's running needs to be on the same network so they can communicate with each other. And I really recommend kind of a private LAN here so that you don't have a lot of interference from other people trying to get on and off. So if you can uh, keep it as a kind of a private local area network. You don't need to have internet access, just need to have one device being able to communicate with another. So the less devices that are in there on that local area network competing for bandwidth, the uh, better that this will work. You can also find apps that allow OSC to communicate with devices. For example, a lot of the digital mixers out there have apps that you can put on a tablet so that you can walk around the venue and actually control all parts of that digital mixer just using that tablet. The tablet is actually communicating with the mixer using OSC commands. And there are some programs out there such as Touch OSC where you can devise your own tablet interface to communicate with a piece of hardware or software. And it could be your tablet or your phone. So you could actually use your phone to send go cues to a light board or you can use your phone to send go cues to a mixer or actually change the settings on a mixer or mute or unmute mics. The advantage of using show control software to send OSC commands is you can synchronize everything. So you can play your audio cues from your show control software. At the same time you can send an OSC command to the light board to go to a specific cue. At the same time, you can send a command to your digital mixer to go to a specific setting on the mixer, for example, muting or unmuting groups of mics. And also, you can send a specific OSC command to a laptop that's running presentation software. So if you're going to project images or videos or simple text, your show control software is going to coordinate and synchronize all those aspects. It's going to synchronize the audio, the lighting, the mixer and the presentation software so that everything is all linked together and operates at the same time. The nice thing about OSC is you don't need anything specific as long as you're using a device that can communicate over a network, which most light boards and mixers now have network ports on them so they can communicate over a network. And of course, tablets and phones can communicate over a network and certainly laptop computers can communicate over a network. So there's no special device needed like a MIDI interface or some kind of interface. It just uses network communication. When you're sending OSC messages, they do have a specific syntax, just like putting together a sentence in English with a subject and a verb and a period, etc. So the syntax for an OSC message is in three parts. The first part is called the address pattern which is what you're seeing here. This looks a lot like a URL for a website. And this can have as many locators in here as you want. It can be simpler, as simply as two. I just gave an example here where you'll have four locators, x32 slash modifier slash page one slash button one. Then you have your type tag. The type tag I've added to the address pattern here. The type tag is the comma F. This indicates that the argument that's going to be sent or information is going to be a floating point number. Okay, so I put comma F and this would be the type that you're most likely going to use 
for theatrical productions and you're going to press a button on a hardware device or send a message to some software, etc. So the comma F, make sure that there's a space in here after the address pattern. So the final piece of information is called the argument. And if you're using the type tag comma F, then this argument has to be a number between 0 and 1. It can be a decimal, it can be like 0 0.4, or it can be 1.0. But you need to send that information for it to be a complete OSC message that's being sent. So let's take a look at multiply and how we send a message like this. This is going to be sending messages to a laptop computer that's running PowerPoint slides. I'm using a program called OSC KeyPress and I've defined my own address patterns. And then of course I told it it's going to be floating point and what kind of argument to expect in there. But before we get that far, we need to be able to communicate with that laptop. So we're going to go and multiply to our production properties and I'm going to go to network. And I have this set up already and we'll just do one for instance here. Let's say I wanted to send information to a light board. So I can simply double click in here and call this light board. And then over here, maybe the address of my light board is 10.0.0.30. And then interface is default. I have to have a port number. Um, and this is something that's usually set by the manufacturer. So let's just say that the port number on this is 7700. And then, of course, I want to say encoding is going to be OSC and then click Enable and then click Accept. So I've got those in there. So that would be an example of how to put together that interface. And you'll, again, you'll find that under Production Properties and it's under Network. Now, you'll see that I've already created one at the top here to send messages to my laptop that has my PowerPoint presentation on it. And I simply call this OSC Send. My laptop has the IP address of 10.0.0.24. I'm going to be sending the messages via port 8000, OSC messages, and enable. So I've set that up so I can send these messages to my laptop. Now let's take a look here. I already created some uh, port messages, and I'll do another one just to show you how to do it. But this is a go next slide, and you can see my network message is slash page one slash next so that is my address pattern then the space comma f so that's my type tag and then the space 1.0 so i've got a complete osc message there and i've told my keypress program that when you receive this message to basically translate this into a right arrow press which means it would go to the next slide in my production so when i send that message it's going to actually press the right arrow key on the keyboard. Now what if I wanted to go to a particular slide? Well then I'm going to use a two-part message. This is a message uh, that I've created to send slide one and you'll see slash page one slash slide one so that's my address pattern space comma f okay for floating and then space 1.0. Now I've told my key press program that when you receive this message basically press the number one on the laptop. And then the next message is going to be the enter key because you know if you press one enter on the PowerPoint computer, it's going to go to slide number one. So I've created this in order to jump to slide number one. And in this case here, again, we can take a look at the OSC command here. It's slash page one slash enter space comma F space 1.0. And I've told OSC key press when you get this command, press the enter key. Now the one thing I've done here on slide one, I made this a start play. So this is going to fire, but then it's also going to advance to the next queue. And then this next queue is just going to wait five hundredths of a millisecond and then press enter just to make sure that it's done correctly. So when I fire this queue, it's basically going to press the number one on my laptop, followed by the enter key, which is going to take me to slide one in my PowerPoint presentation. And you'll see this happen very quickly. If you saw the red bar there go quickly. So I pressed one and then 500 milliseconds later, it sent the message to press the enter button. Now, if I want to press the left arrow, which I also designed a message for that, and I'll show you how to enter that command. So I go up here, I enter my network queue. 
Uh, it's blank right now, so we're getting that message. There's uh, patch invalid. There's no information. So I'm going to go in here. I'm going to just call this previous slide, just as descriptor. Go to my network messages. Then I have to decide the patch. Now this is going to be the information going to my laptop. This one's going to my uh, light board. So I want this one to go to the laptop. It's going to be an ASCII message. And I just click twice down here and the format for my message is slash page one slash previous. And that's my command and I'll put space comma F space 1.0. And that's going to be my complete command. So when my laptop receives that command, I've told the translation software, when you get this command, basically press the left arrow. So there we have a complete message. We click accept and it's ready to go. Now, if I fire this command to the laptop, it will basically press the left arrow and then move me back. Okay, so that's basically how you send OSC commands using Multiplay. Again, what kind of commands you can send depends on what software or hardware you're sending messages to. Usually the hardware has a specific manual that will lay out all the different messages it can accept and the format that it wants to see them in. Software like OSC Keypress allows you to design your own messages and what it's expecting to see and then act upon those. I'll include a link to that OSC Keypress tutorial in my description down below.